due to various technical reasons this is the fourth time I'm recording this video I hope this time I'm going to succeed because last time my microphone ran out of power we well, should really stick around because this is quite fun talking about the latest set of coordinators <laughs> Hi guys, I'm sorry to be late to the party, but here I am with the latest coordinators from IT yet. And oh boy, we're gonna have a very interesting video. I didn't really know that uh, IT yet is going to release new Son of Dongles. That was a news to me and honestly I've seen them first in the parcel, then I received an email about them and I knew that it's gonna be a video about it. So here we are. So in case you are unaware, Sonov has released Sonov Dongle MG24 and Sonov Dongle Max, which totally doesn't look like a dongle. And my impressions? Well, it started very well. Because Sonov, I think, stepped up their packaging and design game. Both devices look really, really nice. They came packaged professionally and it looks like a real product which if you remember the release of the son of usb dongle plus well it wasn't exactly the case so yes i was generally eager to try them out and see what they all about especially that was less than uh, positive about the release of the previous reiterations of the son of dongles mostly because they relied on the community support for firmware and not everything was working out of the box and here we are with the two new coordinators let's start with the tiny one the usb version this is son of dongle uh, mg24 mg24 for stands for the new microcontroller and radio inside which is efr32 mg24 capable of zigbee 3.0 and thread so we have a matter support. This can act as a coordinator or router, depending on how you want to use it. And ITF people claim that this is compatible out of the box with Home Assistant and ZigBee 2MQTT, which I'm using in Node-RED. We'll be testing that. The second device uses exactly the same chipset, meaning you have the same support for ZigBee and Thread. But it's much bigger and it's hard to call it a dongle. This is Son of Dongle Max and it looks like fully fledged router with two antennas, one dedicated to Wi-Fi and one dedicated to a Zigbee or Thread. Now that's not all because it has a USB interface, USB Type-C for charging and power and control of a USB. Uh, and there is an Ethernet port that also supports PoE. So you can connect this with a single cable and power it up and get it ready to use. That's quite exciting. Now, both devices are made of metal, look really sturdy, and I really like the way they are designed. Now, the USB version comes with a half a meter extension cable that you can use to put the antenna a little bit further away, for example, from something like Raspberry Pi, so you, it interferes less with a Wi-Fi signal. And it's much smaller in terms of footprint, so it won't be in a way of using all the ports, which is nice because this, this thing, this was a monstrosity. The bigger one comes with a couple of sticky pads. You can stick it somewhere. There is a plastic bracket that you can use it to clip in and on various surfaces and USB uh, C cable to connect it via USB should you prefer that option. There is also a button in the top, but I haven't figured out what is it used for, probably for pairing. The next thing that took me by surprise was pricing. Let's start with the Son of Dongle Max. This is priced £42 or $45 if you were to buy it right now on IT at store. The links are in the description, so do check them out. And to be fair, this is on pair with SM Light coordinators. The coordinators I really, really like, so if you fancy learning more about them, just uh, click through on the video in the corner. And that's fair enough, because apart from Zigbee slash Thread uh, radio, you also get ESP32 to manage a web interface. This comes with a web interface that you can access and easily configure it for either Home Assistant or Zigbee 2MQTT. The both systems are supported out of the box. But what raised my eyebrow was price of this, because this is priced £32 or $35, which is almost $15 more expensive than the original Son of USB dongle. And that left me scratching my head thinking why this is so expensive, what's so good about it? Well, 
I was about to find out. I usually open these things up to find out what's inside, but since we already know what microcontroller lays inside this, and this is actually quite well built and sealed, I was worried that I'm going to break it, so I wasn't going to do it. There isn't really much else to say about this dongle other than it has a 180-degree uh, rotatable uh, antenna, and it claims uh, up to four and a half decibel boost in the range. I guess we'll find out if I can tell the difference. With some of Dongle March, there were a bunch of surprises waiting for me once I've accessed the web interface. First of all, the web interface looks really nice. I, I like what they've done. It's really clearly laid out with the fancy graphics and everything illustrated in this. You always know how your unit, unit is configured. But support for the Zigbee slash thread isn't the only option there. Thanks to the um, ESP32, you have support for Wi-Fi, meaning that you can bridge it wirelessly. It's nothing new because all the coordinators were able to do it. However, you can also run it with the inner access point mode and you can connect up to eight devices, long, long bandwidth, mind you, so it'll connect to smartphones and stuff like that. But if you have a couple of Wi-Fi devices that you, for some reason, don't want to keep this on the same subnet as your main network, you can very much do so and control it this way. Apart from that, it also support eWilink remote, which is uh, present on some of the eWilink devices. So if you have those, you can use that to link another eight eWilink devices via Bluetooth interface and you'll be able to speak to them. Those eWilink remote enabled devices are usually light switches, etc. Lastly, I also discovered a couple of tools. There is a WireGuard for your security, there is a Wi-Fi scanner, so you can scan your network and decide what channels you want to run your Zigbee slash thread on so they don't interfere with Wi-Fi. So that's very handy and I've used that tool in my experiments. And um, obviously the settings to set up your access point, etc. What is also really nice that both tools comes with external support for a son of mate flasher tool online. So now you can access their website where you can easily flash the firmware on both devices. So either the USB based uh, son of dongle and the big one that has the cap capability to download the firmware directly onto it and flash it from the web interface. Super handy and super easy to use. It's very much in line with SM Lite coordinators. I like it. Before we move into my experiences, bear in mind two things. First of all, I'm using pre-release firmwares for both of the devices. And by the time you're watching this review, you might have a different firmware on your devices. So that's one point. Second point is that I was really harsh in my review of Son of Dongle because nothing was working correctly and Sonop doesn't have the best track uh, record of releasing dongles with support so I was really skeptical coming in to my tests. So first up I decided to get two Raspberry Pis, load one with a fresh instance of Home Assistant, the second one with Node-RED and Zigbee to MQTT and figure out what I can, can I do. And here I had a nice, first nice surprise with Zigbee to MQTT having a nice dashboard uh, kind of setup panel which I haven't seen before. I know I came late to the front end of Zigbee to MQTT, I was reminded of that many many times, but that panel uh, worked really well I, to the point where I connected all of my coordinators to a single board to verify when I'm gonna break stuff. But no, all I had to do is just select one from a drop list and set it up and within a couple of moments I was able to use it via USB. Within seconds, I've paired another couple of sensors and I was confident enough that as long as the sensors are supported by community, you shouldn't really have a problem pairing devices over. Meanwhile, I plugged that into my PoE enabled switch and connected it over and I was able to navigate to the web address and set everything up for uh, Zigbee to Home Assistant. Obviously, to make this one work, I had to change the way I connect to it because it was over the TCP rather than USB. And again, no problems there. So how did it work with Home Assistant? Well, I did run into some problems, but not the problems that you're going to run in because uh, I was trying to set up the USB dongle while this was already on the network and Home Assistant, the new instance of the Home Assistant, decided I will select this as my main coordinator. And that's why I wasn't able to add this one until the main coordinator was removed from my Home Assistant instance. But once I've learned that, this one was recognized instantly and I was able just to add it as a regular device. And after that, it, take, it took a couple of moments to add a couple of sensors and I could confirm that everything is working to my expectation. 
this also proves that uh, Son of Dongle Max worked out of the box and I didn't really have to do anything to set it up. It's a nice experience. So what about the performance of those two coordinators? First of all, I do apologize, I'm only going to be testing Zigbee Radio because I don't have any thread sensors, so you'll have to wait for the thread evaluation. I might do it at some point. Moving on, you have to remember that Zigbee is a mesh network and it's only as good as your mesh network is, meaning that it's more than just coordinated that contributes to the strength of the uh, mesh and how it performs. With that said, I did pair a couple of end devices to kind of try to evaluate if I don't have any problems. And while they're paired flawlessly, I left a couple of temperature sensors working overnight to see if they're gonna be updating in the regular interval and what's well, gonna be the link quality like. And I, I'm gonna sound really boring because in both circumstances I didn't really come across anything that would stood out. Temperature sensors were reporting great and I didn't really see any problems. So with that I decided to validate how much better it is in terms of range. And I know mesh network range isn't anything in my circumstances, it's gonna be wildly different to your circumstances. But what I've done, I took all my coordinators, which are visible right now on the table, and I've plugged them one by one while running my Zigbee button. Uh, where's my Zigbee button? I swear I had it. There it is. And I was running around the house with the Zigbee button, pressing the button in different locations, trying to figure out how strong is the signal of my coordinator in relation to anything else. So I did one test next to a uh, coordinator, one in the opposite side of the house, one downstairs in the furthest corner, and then outside in the five meters uh, distances of uh, intervals until I ran out of range. And in my testing, I was using the original CC2531, something I've started my Zigbee adventure with. And then I had the uh, Electro Lama and Son, Son of Zigbee dongle uh, and then also I had SM Lite 06 and SM Lite 07. And I built a special node red tool that allowed me to investigate the signal strength in random locations ar around the house. And I think I finally came to conclusion why this is so much more expensive than si Son of Dongle P. Because the range on this thing, honestly, it was one of the best performing coordinators from entire lineup. And and I think the only reason why Son of Dongle Max performed slightly less at distance was the interference from the Wi-Fi antenna, which is already pre present on the device. And I had it set it to a P point, just a mess thing around. But as it stands right now, previously I was recommending SL Lite coordinators, and they are still brilliant devices, but considering that you can get these as well and they are nicely priced, you should definitely check them out before you make your final decision. If you want to improve your Zigbee or Thread um, network, you could buy one of those devices and turn your old uh, coordinator into router mode and enjoy your new Zigbee slash Thread network. And if it comes to recommendation, which I would recommend whether you should get the bigger one, the maxed out version or the USB, well, to be fair, since you're only spending about seven to ten dollars more on the son of dongle max you might as well treat yourself because this thing is a beast and i expect you're gonna have a really good time with that especially that it comes with a nice interface so guys big thanks to idea for sending me those after a little bit late for testing yeah. and i hope you enjoyed that video check out the description of this video you're gonna find the links to the coordinators so you can uh, get them for yourself and if you want to know what's next i have a couple of more solo devices in my review queue well you know how youtube works so i'm going to explain you that if you have any questions the list of social media links down below hit me up in there follow me there and uh, start a conversation as for now big thanks for watching and i'll see you next time